Hello YouTube, Steve O Trucker here. Um, today I'm going to talk about tailgaters. And I uh, don't know how I'm going to phrase this, but this is probably in general to towards any form of tailgating, but probably also more the aimed at as professional drivers, who, truckers who actually do do it. Which I totally disagree with tailgaters. No, and you, you find that out as we discuss it. But yeah, so one reason why this brought on today is because a fellow trucker this morning, I was doing 50 in the 50. I was doing bang on 50 because my sat nav was saying I was doing 50, by the way, because I know somebody will comment down below saying, oh, you must be going way too slow or something. No, definitely not. <laughs> you know, this is along the way that you don't really want to be speeding, but if you want to speed, you speed. But I'm not risking it down there. I'm not risking my own license for somebody else's game. Yeah, but never mind. I'll deduct off a little bit at that point. But basically, I had a truck this morning really i mean he was so close up behind my chuff or my six that i thought he was part of my trailer i couldn't see the front of his cab all i saw was his pretty much his box body and a margin amount of his cab that's how close he was to my rear end of my trailer and what he was doing he was coming out sideways flashing his ha his uh, high beams at me going back in and he'll do that again a few times. Uh, he gave up after Vic one and he realised actually. <laughs> but he's still all the way from basically warming stuff to the 303. After 600 yards, go right on the I'll roundabout. That Third exit. Yeah. I can know that might get a bit irritating. Yeah, so basically he was there behind, right behind me from Warminster to 303. I think it's like an Elite Foods truck. I don't mind mentioning the company at the end of the day because that driver should not have been doing what he was doing at all. There's no reason for what he was doing. Legally or safely, you know. And this is what I'm going to get discussing about. You know, tailgating is unbelievably dangerous. No matter how frustrating the person is in front of you, you know, if it is actually a slow drive who's holding you up, you're not going to gain anything by getting up Sunday 6 so close. If they have to take emergency action up ahead of you, you're going into them. And that's what would, you know, at some points during that, if I even coughed on my brakes, he would have gone into me. You know, that's how bad it was. It was just like, and stuff like that especially off I'm not saying especially you know it's no less dangerous than if it was a car or doing it and yes he could argue oh it's just his life at risk it's not the point because if he was if he's doing that to me it would probably a good sign he would do it to anybody you know he'll do it to a car he'll do it to a motorbiker you know and I'm not trying to say it's all truckers here this I was using that as an example so it doesn't matter if it's a car tailgating another car, a bike, or you know, a van tailgating a truck, or vice versa. It still is really more or less the same amount of danger. I've seen some real nasty accidents caused by tailgaters. Some real horrific ones as well, involving trucks who were tailgating. You know, to the point, their cabs have been crushed. And I have no idea if the driver survived or not. I, if I looks at them, I would lean to probably not. But, you know, I've seen some stuff. Um, I, I know I haven't seen it all, but the stuff I have seen, uh, you know, perks in the head going, it's not worth it. Seriously, it's not worth it. You're not going to really gain anything. You're just going to gain more stress, more pressure. You're not just going to stress yourself out. You're probably going to stress out the vehicle that you're tailgating. I'm not saying it. I'm sorry if I'm also talking as if it's you who are the tailgater. I know the chances are whoever will see this video doesn't do that stuff. But hopefully, you know, it might reach one person who might do it and makes them think, actually, is it actually worthwhile what I'm doing? 
because there's you know let's put it back into that truck's perspective what could have been the possibilities while he was trying to speed and tailgate because he obviously wants to go way faster you know I know we got deadlines you got driver's hours to worry about working hours you know work pressures you know I mean there could have been other factors involved which legally shouldn't have been involved but who knows I'll be me assuming but realistically in the real world those what I've just listed there is the main factors generally but they shouldn't be factors you should never allow as a professional driver the job to drive you no matter how much is your boss is on your phone saying phoning up going get there get there as soon as you can foot flat down bear in mind your boss will won't cover your back if you get caught oh your boss may do but in general he has no legal right to because in some ways that could be self-admittance as well legally so that's why a lot of companies these days will just go, well, it's off like, mate, you're speeding. I did say I'll cover you, but I didn't have to. There's nothing contract saying that, <laughs> you know. Otherwise, you ought to prove it at the end of the day. By the time you've done that, you still go have the penalty points no matter what, because it was you who was speeding, not you, but it was the driver who was tailgating, who was either speeding or tailgating. And believe it or not, it is actually illegal to tailgate as well. So, I'm not saying it's a highly prosecuted thing. I don't assume it is, really. I suppose it is a hard thing to catch. You know, the police, you know, traffic officer or policeman has to be, you know, within, you know, has to see it fundamentally and witness it and know it's tailgating. But, as I said, I would like to apologise. I know it's a bit aimed at it's you, the watcher, who is doing it. But I'm just trying to bring some awareness out there. You know, to take a step back and, you know, at the very least, ask, do I ever do that? And if the answer is no, happy days, you know. But I do honestly feel it's coming a little bit more common amongst us professional drivers. And, I mean, yes, I open it. I'm... I look a bit straight and narrow. I'm, I'm not saying I'm 100% by the book, but I'd rather stick by the book than be a cowboy. You know, because I've actually, what that driver's, that professional driver earlier today was basically being, he was no better than and a real below average car driver. At best. And if it, you know, I'm sure be people agree with me with this, you know. I'd say Poish doesn't deserve to hold his license at the end of the day. Oh, it sounds nasty, that, and it is hard hitting. But the other thing is, drivers like that let us all down, you know. Because when they are involved in those nasty accidents, it just builds more and more backing for another subject I'm going to talk about driverless trucks stuff like that and just gives negative PR towards the industry and those drivers and as I said I'm more I am I have targeted this more at as professional drivers just primarily because you know just because we should know better at the end of the day. It's a 50 along here. So I'm sat now saying it's a 30, and it's, I know it's a 50 up to the bend down here. Yeah, so comment down below you know have you witnessed it you know before well I'm sure you have I mean I think most motorists have witnessed somebody being up their six in some way or another in whichever transport before it's never pleasant is it you know it's, uh, and that's what I was guessing at it it just builds upon putting more stress 
upon, you know, the vehicle that's being pressurised by the tailgater. You know, I mean, the tailgater may have accepted all this, might be quite happy to index himself or herself, you know, or might be totally oblivious of the danger that they're actually putting themselves in. I know that could be another factor, that they're just completely oblivious to what their actions may hold and, you know, At the end of the day, it's not the point really at the end of the day, you know, I, I only hope that this video might get hit one of those drivers and makes them actually start thinking, actually, you know, it's all I suggest is take a step back and, as I said, ask, have I ever tailgated? And if the answer is yes or no, yes, you need to work on your driving, back off, give some space. Overtake the vehicle in a safe opportunity if needs be, if you're able to. If you can't, I'm sorry, you know. We can't always, you know, overtake everything. You no, know, I find times that I'm stuck behind stuff that, you know, if I was on my motorbike I could have overtook or in my car. But because I was fully loaded, I couldn't, you know. Because of the road situation, you know. But, you know, that, I hope admit, you know, that drive earlier was a perfect example. I mean, I'm sorry I wasn't recording at the time and I was half tempted to get some footage off, off my dash cam of when he's passed me, but it proves nothing that, to be honest, and I'm not going to do a picture name and show of the company, even though I have mentioned the company itself. Maybe I could maybe get in touch with the company and give them a little poke to go at least have a word with your driver because they should be able to tell who was around there at that sort of time I don't think it's a massive company I could be wrong but at the same it's not the point at the end of the day you know I, I, and I've seen it from a lot of road users from car drivers you know it doesn't matter if you're a car driver if God, doesn't matter what you're in, it's just as dangerous, you know, to certain degrees. I get really tight in the cab to sort of say to that cyclist, do not. I know what cyclists are like. He is sort of hovering the walls behind me. He's gone in my weird blind spot. There he is. Just check where he was. Yeah, but I'm sorry if it's a bit of a doomy gloomy video. I do apologise, but this is part of my educational series at the end of the day. And I only hope that it only informs people. And if you are a good driver, happy days. You know, if you don't tailgate, happy days. You have you know, you have nothing to worry about. You know, it's just an informative video. But, as I said, if you, you've witnessed it, you know, you have something else to add that I may have missed. I mean, yes, I hope it, there's other scenarios that I know there's some argument within the subject of going, well, what if it's a really cut, slow driver up ahead? Uh, going way slower than the speed limit. There's well, still no justification to tailgate them at the end of the day. There's no justification to put your life or somebody else's life in danger. You're not going to achieve anything. You're just probably going to inflame the issue. You know, and if something goes wrong and you're, you or I or whoever's tailgating and there's an accident and it gets found that you were tailgating, you're go you know, the person who was tailgating is obviously going to be in more and more trouble, isn't he, if he survives, you know. I mean, the speeds that we were doing on the road, I mean, it was 50 miles an hour on the straights that I was doing, legally. Now, I was fully laden as well, so if he went into me, 
you know, it'd be a shock of his life, I think. It'd be a shock of my life as well, you know, in some ways. But there was not much I could have done. I didn't try and want to pull in, but it was that close. If I tried to pull in to a lay-by, I don't think there would have been any time to make it. You know, when we had to speed change, I had to sort of slowly put the brakes on. I did try and give him the trucker's fog-like flashing technique back to him to go, oi, you know, back off. I, actually, this reminds me, on the subject of tailgating, yesterday I had a car who was tailgating me, which is pretty common as a truck driver. You have it all the time, or we have it all the time that you have cars tailgating. Yeah, it, it'll be much streamlining us. And it's not a surprise with car drivers, you know. I'm not saying it's justified, no it isn't. But I had a car drive yesterday, I should have bought this in earlier. Perfect example. I had a van pull out in front of me to get around this cyclist. I mean, a car done it before, so I thought, fair enough, enough to Then a car almost right in front of, not a van, a van pulled out right in front of me to get around this cyclist. Going head on with me. In less than like, probably less than 100 mil, around the 50 meter mark. I mean, it was real close. I mean, I'd slam on. That's, no, we were very near miss. The car behind me is incredibly lucky. You know, they didn't go into me. Even though they gave me the anchor sign. You know, ooh ah, I'm dropping the anchor. Which I do not know why the car driver gave me that. They shouldn't have been driving up my six for that perfectly good reason. And it wasn't my fault either. A way of, I could have maybe not emergency stopped and gone into the van. That might have been the other solution. I would have probably killed the people in the van. And yes, you could probably argue it was the van's fault. But I'm not there to get involved in an accident or to hurt or kill anybody. I'm going to try and choose the less of two evils at the end of the day. And I was fully laden at the time again. You know, that was really close. I mean, my, I could smell the brakes burning. That's how hard I was on the brakes. It might be not just my brakes, it probably be another stuff, it might be the rub on the tyres. But the truck was all fire, I checked it out after that, and, you know, that was my the most ha hairiest emergency stop I've ever had to do, aside so from uh, when I had the accident the car the other day. Well, no. <sighs> but, you know, that was almost a perfect example. So I some obviously the van, that's no perfect example of why you should always look before you overtake anything. Because he obviously was not, he's obviously in a rush to get home and thought, I'm a ninja, and probably just realised, oh, I'm, I'm in the van. It's not a sports car. It's not a motorbike. <laughs> and even then, I wouldn't have done that overtake on the motorbike. It would just been stupid. <laughs> you know, and that's it. It's biblically stupid. But as I say, it is what it is. You know, we can only... You know, drive safe ourselves. But as you know, it is frustrating when you do get a tailgater up here. You know, especially when you are doing everything right. You are doing the speed limit. You know, the road is safe, you know. But as I said, long as you're doing the right thing, that's what matters. You know, that's the only thing you really do, I'm sorry. You know, there is ways how to deal with tailgaters, like on the truck we use the fog light look of it, because it's like a separate module. So, I know on the car it works a bit better, but it is a bit naughty. I don't recommend you do that, really. You know, it's the sort of thing on the truck sometimes to do to for other vehicles behind us to back off. Because we think they're a little bit too close. Not that I recommend doing that. But, another way is to just maintain, stay calm. Maybe slow down the smidge by a few mile an hour, because they might get the idea. It doesn't always work. I don't think it would have worked with that chap either, or whoever was driving that truck earlier. Because, you know, I, actually I did try doing that, actually. I did try 
a slow down trick, but he wasn't obviously having it. So the other option is to maybe consider pulling over. Maybe, you know, you don't have to, you're perfectly within your rights not to, you know. And that's a debate you have to have with yourself. I was having with myself, you know, the opportunities I had, I couldn't because I would have to slow down, not majorly, but enough that the risk factor was going up, I was really up massively within right up my back. I know, yes, I could set the indicator on, he might back off, but I thought, if you know why I don't back like that, you're increasing the danger, something happens, it happens. I mean, if, say, if a kid walked out in front of me or something like that, I would emergency stop even with it knowing he was up my back. Because at the end of the day, he's made the decision to be up my back. You know, it is wrong to think, oh, these people must agree, you know, that sacrifice of life. No. But I think if, you know, you ever got yourself in a situation that you think, I'm perfectly happy to kill myself here, or, you know, there's something gone wrong, hasn't there? You have overstepped the mark. Whoever, you know, anybody, you know, if anybody said, I'm happy to risk my life here, to be up right behind this vehicle, that's what you've got to think about is is it where do you draw the line with it <laughs> yeah so hopefully it's been fairly informative I'm, I do apologise if it's a bit of a ah but I want to do a quick video on it because it is an issue that's out there it, it's an issue on the roads between all motorists, really, you know. But it's really embarrassing when you see a fellow heavy goods driver doing it. I mean, and it just builds up that thing. It makes you wonder why that our reputation is being attacked. It's because of those clouds why our reputation is being attacked and why it's being let down so massively. It's down to that 1% of all professional drivers, but it's 1% that will drag us down at the end of the day. Because they're just giving all the ammunition in the world to the government, to the media, you know, to regulators heavier and heavier, to the point, as I said, it could force the government's hand to say, actually, we're going to make it mandatory by a certain day that all companies must have, you know, automated trucks, driverless trucks. We don't care the risks are. You know, we'd much rather deal with that than, you know, the clowns that are tailgating and you know driving recklessly and you know but yeah so I'll end the video around here so thank you very much for watching it is seriously very much appreciated I do apologize of late that there's not been a huge quantity of videos out I've rather put a video out for a reason than not and also I've been really busy at home lately. I mean, we're selling our house at a flat at the moment. And all the legal stuff that's going through for that at the moment, it, it could go on for a few months, but that's not mainly the reason, but because I had to move stuff out of the flat, I've just been really busy. Plus also I've been doing a lot of motorbike stuff of late as well, so, you know, that's been getting it in the way. But I'm still aiming to release a video a week. There might be the old little turn time, a bit like when I go over to Florida, there'll be a gap then, potentially. I might release something, I'm in Florida, you never know, you know, wait out and see. Pardon me. And we'll see where it goes from there, you know, I, I, said, I just want to apologise, to me it feels like I've been, I suppose I've been spoiling the channel a wee bit, at least like two or three videos a week. And now I've gone to, I think, two weeks of only releasing one video a week. But then again, I have said that, that I always aim to at least release one, so. But I'm aware that I'm only releasing one at the moment. It is due because of good reasons as well, you know. Because 
only had a short weekend last weekend so I only had one day off and I wanted to get out the motorbike as well and, you know so I want the, the other evil <laughs> but yeah so what I'll do I'll leave it at that and I'll say thank you once again and to all the recent new subscribers as well a massive thank you very much and same as usual to all the long-term subscribers yet again thank you very much it is seriously very much appreciated you know I, I find it amazing you know and people who comment on my videos as well you know, thank you very much you know I like engaging you know and hopefully I don't want to spread a negative review of the industry but I'm also trying to show the truth talk about some of the negatives within the industry and about being on the roads and all that and hopefully like this video to bring some awareness to maybe reach that one percent or that one driver who does tailgate and maybe they do know they do do it and it makes them then take a step back and question going actually is it worthwhile what am i going to achieve you know you're not going to get there any faster you know or not necessarily any faster you're not going to make it's going to be more stressed out that's it but yeah but yes again i'll end the video at that but thank you very much once again for watching also check out my facebook and my twitter i've been updating those much this week or so i'll probably update something soon on it but i'll see you in a little bit over and out